Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and we're back with another animated background video. Now, if you saw our last one and you watch EC Abrams, you'll notice that actually they came out very similar uh, in time to each other. And in retrospect, if I would have seen his video, I would have gained a lot better techniques. Ours was like really CPU intensive and there were some kind of pros and cons of each different method, but I think overall his was a better method um to do it so we're gonna be kind of jumping off from where he left off to kind of create a couple animate cool animated backgrounds um, but i highly recommend you check out his video on patterns because he goes into a lot more detail about how to actually use the the tool the reptile whereas we're just going to create a cool animated background so i don't even know if i want to call this a tutorial as much as creating cool animated backgrounds in after effects as we kind of keep evolving different techniques you get different pros and cons for each and you get different looks let's just go ahead and jump into after effects here we're going to create a couple animated backgrounds um, starting with a new composition and it's going to be 2560 by 14 1440 uh, because that's the size that I want my main composition to be and I'm just gonna hit enter And then I'm gonna create a new composition Composition new and I'm gonna make it maybe 200 by 200 It doesn't really matter how small you make it, but you definitely want it to be like under 500 pixels each you could scale it down later, but um, It's a little bit easier if you just kind of make it one-to-one -one. Um, So if you see uh, EC Abrams video, you'll know that um, This will be our tile and then we're gonna basically replicate that tile on our main composition. So I'm just gonna rename this to main comp. Main comp one, because I'm probably gonna make two in this video. And then I'm gonna rename this to um, tile comp one. Oh, I might break it up into two videos, we'll see. So um, let me just kind of give you an idea of, of, of what kind of effects we're actually gonna use. So I'm just gonna create a polygon up here and holding shift, it's gonna make it kind of proportional. And I'm just going to center it up in the composition. Um, if you don't know how to center it up, um, it's kind of confusing, but we know that it's 100 by 100 because the composition is 200 by 200. Or you could use this tool by Mount MoGraph, um, or I'm sorry, this tool built into After Effects called Align in which you could just align the object. If you don't have this window, you can just go to Windows, Window Align and you'll get this cool toolbar and it works great. So I'm gonna make the background black um, just by toggling the transparency. And I'm gonna open up this shape layer and start toggling some items. So I am going to make it three points because I want it to be a triangle. And and I think that the, for this one, this is gonna be very simple. I think that's all we're gonna do for this one. Um, but I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and set a scale keyframe and an R on the keyboard to set a rotation keyframe. And um, you'll notice that this composition is about 10 seconds long and I want it to loop. So I need to make sure that the beginning keyframes are the same as the end keyframes. So I'm gonna go to the end and I'm gonna just copy these keyframes um, by hitting Control Shift C and then Control Shift V. But I'm gonna make the rotation one. So basically this is just gonna rotate around itself once. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to maybe two seconds and I'm gonna increase the scale and then maybe down a little bit longer and decrease the scale. And maybe I'm just gonna spread these out because I wanna need the beginning to be the same as the end. And so if we watch this back, very simple, nothing too crazy here going on. So, and you'll notice that it's nice and slow, which, um, is for what we're doing is what I want it to look like, but um, you could adjust yours however you want. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit more dynamic by using the motion V2 script from OutMoGraph. Um, but I'm gonna show you, so what I just did was I just had a little bit of smoothing, but if I open up the graph editor, basically you can recreate this graph in the graph editor and um, make it look however you want. In fact, I might even adjust it just a little bit. So we'll see what that looks like. We're just messing around, nothing too serious here. Just to make the transitions just a little bit smoother. I don't know what this is gonna look like, we'll see. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, again, you could just adjust that with the graph editor, but um, I just used the tool from Mount MoGraph. I'm just gonna try to make these kind of line up just a little bit better. And that's pretty much it 
for this first element. Now we're gonna make this a little bit more complicated, but um, I'm just gonna show you on the main comp what tool we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna drag comp tile comp one into the center of the composition and make the background black again. Now this is where EC Abrams tutorial comes into play and he talks through how to use this tool much better. But you wanna search for um, something built in After Effects called Reptile. Rep CC Reptile, it's kind of like repeat tile, but it's like Reptile, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Um, and you just drag it onto the object and you want to expand it to the left, expand it to the right, expand to the top or bottom and the top. And actually from here, if you just hit S on the keyboard, you can scale this down and keep repeating if you like. I like to just do this just so um, in case I wanna scale it, I, I can. So you can see there, um, I might scale it down just a little bit so the sides are equal and you'll start to get an idea kind of what you're getting now. Um, I will trim the bottom just a little bit because Don't really want to see that next object. Um, but in this tool, you're able to, to modify how it gets tiled. So I, I personally like the 180 degree twist, but um, some tiles actually look better if you do um, unfold. I just find unfold to look a little bit too kind of perfect. Uh, I noticed checker 180 degrees kind of offsets it enough so it looks cool. So that already looks kind of cool. I mean, depending on what you're doing, that might be enough. But um, I found this really cool way to make it look even more dynamic. So I'm gonna open up a proportional grid. I'm sorry, not a proportional grid, a just standard grid. And I'm gonna start drawing with the pen tool. Now I'm gonna have a stroke, but no fill. To get rid of the fill, you could just click fill and then click this little none button, hit okay. And I'm just gonna start drawing uh, a bouncing line. So I'm gonna try to make sure that this angle and the angle from the resultant is about the same so that way it looks the most realistic um, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but um, you know the the closer it looks the kind of better uh, effect you're gonna end up with and I'm just gonna make it look like this thing is just bouncing all over the place and just click around the corners. Until we get something that, that looks kind of cool. And then we could just make it go right off screen. So in itself, that doesn't look that cool. But if I, uh, I should probably na start naming these layers, huh? Triangle and line. And I'm going to open up the line, add trim paths, and I'm going to open up the trim paths and set a start and end date and just kind of bring it all the way back. So the trick with this is your start and end, and end. you want to make the end 100% and the start 100%, but then you actually want to offset these a little bit. So you want the, let's see, maybe you want the end you just want to move the keyframes over just a tad. So that way we're left with something like this. The depending on, on, on how you adjust these keyframes will determine how long you want your object to be. So I think that looks pretty cool. And I'm actually just going to duplicate this layer and hit you on the keyboard. And I'm probably going to just while holding alt, just drag these keyframes in a bit. That way I can kind of offset this, but not have the keyframes wind up off screen. Hit T on the keyboard and just bring the transparency down to maybe 50. And we can now move that over just a tad. And it just depends on how long you want the tail to be. Um, I actually kind of like doing this a few times. And when you retoggle on the triangle, you can see that it looks a little bit more dynamic 
And when you play it, I'm gonna reduce it to half resolution. You can see that you get something that actually looks pretty cool. And uh, one thing to note here is if this is set to mirror or unfold, the lines will bounce off of each other. So I'm just gonna toggle off the triangle and show you what I mean here. This could be a cool effect just, just on itself. Because you're kind of mirroring um, the object and it's bouncing on itself, it looks as if it's just continuing, but really it's just um, different composition. So this line almost looks like it's traveling like across the composition um, when really it's not. So um, again, you could mess around with these and see which ones you like. Um, I personally think that having both objects looks the best and scaling it down by pressing S on the keyboard I think that size probably looks about right. Expand it to the left, ex just expand it in every direction basically. And then I'm gonna add a fill, effect generate fill. And I kind of like that dark red. Maybe press T on the keyboard, bring the transparency down to like 50%. Add a background layer, new solid. And I kind of like this off purple or off blue look. Maybe not quite that purplish. Effect, generate, fill. We scale it up a little bit. And you can even go crazy. You can duplicate this layer and change it to flip 180 degrees. And now you have kind of like something that even looks even crazier. Um, or, you know, uh, mirror or unfold. So now you do kind of get a random aspect, but as, as well as a pattern. So um, anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe. If you'd like to download any of these, um, you can always download them over on our Patreon account, where um, at the $3 level, you can um, download all the project files. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please keep an eye out for future animated background videos, and we'll see you next time.